Okay, got all the meeting to order. It's eight. It's six thirty p.m. <laughs> on Monday, November the eighth, and this is the uh, November meeting of the Committee of the Whole Administration and Finance for the Township of Edwardsburg Cardinal. And uh, just note that we have regrets from our volunteer member, Mr. Robertson, who may come late or may not be able to appear due to a previous commitment. But I would like to welcome back Mr. Rainville to the second member, the second meeting of the committee. And um, having said that, uh, moving to item number two on the agenda, which is approval of the agenda. And the chair is looking for a motion to approve the agenda as circulated. So moved. I have Councillor Cameron moving. Does he have a seconder? And I have Councillor Hunter seconding. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. And moving to item number three on the agenda, which is disclosure of pecuniary interest. Does anyone have a pecuniary interest here this evening? And if so, what is the general nature thereof? Money. No disclosures this evening, and the minutes will so reflect. And uh, number four item on the agenda is business arising from the previous committee of the whole meeting, which was the meeting that took place on, I think, yes, it was Tuesday, October the 12th. And those minutes have been circulated. Does anyone have any business arising from those meetings, minutes, or from the meeting itself? Councillor Hunter. I just want to inquire uh, on the six A of the minutes there the discussion items where you were discussing the load restriction being placed in the Highland Bridge at the point of the signs put up. I just told it yesterday there and I see there's no signs up on it, any restriction signs up on it yet. So pylon on the side of it, there's no signs up. Well, that's very interesting because uh I was under the impression from the county council meeting where, where that was announced that the signs would be up almost immediately. Um, oh, there, there is a, a, a county council committee the whole meeting on Wednesday. Uh, so I'll uh, ask so, when, when we can expect to see signage. Uh, if I may, through the chair, uh, I, I was back there this weekend and the, the, the signs are uh, up for that there is load, load restrictions. The one load restriction sign is substantially uh, south of the... Uh, it's, of the sorry? It's substantially south of the bridge. I think it's several, it's at least a kilometer away oh. from that bridge. Oh, and that was this weekend? That was this weekend. Oh, uh, okay. So the signs I'm are up. I was looking for the signs at either end of the bridge where they go to place yeah, the so island road. The, the, there the, you know when you come off the Highland Road and come on, if there's no sign say there's a restriction on that. You're 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 correct. That sign that sign is actually uh, north of Highland Road. Yeah. Uh, and the, the the one if you're if you're heading north is substantially south of that of, of that bridge. So you're 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 one hundred percent correct. If you're going down Highland Road you would and, and turn on the County Road 22, you would not know that there's a road restriction. <clears throat> okay, I'll, I'll mention that tomorrow on Wednesday. Any other business arising from that minute, from that meeting? No other business arising. I'm about to move on. Item number five on the agenda is delegations and presentations. We have none this evening. And item number six on the agenda is discussion items, and we have none uh, there as well. So I'm at item number seven on the agenda, which is the action and information items, and item number seven A is the third quarter treasury and reserve report. And uh, so that's the report that starts on page eight of 41. So the report is on the table for discussion. There are apparently, from what I can see, uh, five different um, sort of sub reports here. There's the financial report as of September the 30th. The long-term debt schedule as of September the 30th, the year-to-date capital status report, the modernization report, and the reserve and the reserve fund report. Chair is open for questions. Discussions. 
Mr. Chair, would it, would it serve the purpose if, uh, if we maybe had the, uh, the treasurer highlight uh, some of these reports? Absolutely. In the absence of discussions, I think it's a great way to proceed. Thank you. I will uh, I will ask the treasurer to uh, to, to maybe uh, highlight uh, some portions of, uh, of each uh, report. Certainly, uh, through the chair, I'm going to start off with the financial report. It's basically a, the asset and liability um, report on the balance sheet and as you can in a pseudo balance sheet. Um, the biggest thing, I guess, would be we're continuing to have <coughs> good results in our tax receivables. Um, and then there's a big variance between the payables and the difference uh, in the accounts payable section. It's really uh, in 2020, if you can remember, the school boards had deferred payments in September to December. So uh, our 2020 September was low. This year uh, it included those school board payments uh, as well as the hot mix uh, payments. So that's slightly larger in comparison to prior years. Um, that's the biggest things of note on that particular report. Uh, Long-term debt, the variance uh, from last quarter is the addition of the case grader that's now been added as a, as a new debt to the schedule. Um, stat, capital status reports, sorry that it's uh, as large as it is, but what I've been trying to get uh, my department managers to do is to provide us with some verbiage on the status of each project. So there is a lot of words there. <laughs> Um, if there's anyone, I mean, a lot of our projects are in really good shape and they're looking completed. Um, I will be bringing forward to the committee at some point, um, probably not till the new year when we finalize all of our final 2021 numbers uh, and with, with, with projects that need to carry forward into 22. Um, I am recognizing that there's not a budget meeting, uh, but with preliminary numbers until we get to the end. Yeah, there's uh, all of our, our capital, and a lot of our capital is all the budget. So. Um, modernization funding uh, report. We still have a fair amount of money uh, left in the pot that's uncommitted of $274,000. Uh, there is money uh, that is still committed from our 2020, and the majority of that money is related to. Uh, the app. We had done a website upgrade, but we also had uh, committed funds to to uh, purchase or fund um, a uh, web app, and we haven't uh, we haven't got haven't finalized that part, portion of the project. Um, so yeah, there's um, there's still a lot of money within that particular uh, that particular project. Um, in terms of reserve and reserve um, schedule. Um, not a lot to really outline in here, uh, what's specific. Um, not a lot has happened since the last, so there's been some interest that's been um, calculated in a, a portion to each of the uh, reserve funds from the prior approval. Well, discussions, questions from the treasurer? Just, uh, just, have just one, Mr. Nick. I'm just looking at the bottom of the modernization report. So we have 274,000 uh, and change committed already, and we have a total of 332,907. That is, is still a balance. So we're actually the number of the three about fifty thousand. The three thirty-two is what's in the bank. Yes. In the in the uh, reserve fund itself, the two seventy four is is uncommitted. Above that, the fifty eight thousand is what's committed. Okay. So we still have two hundred seventy four six fifty three uncommitted, not not allocated to any specific project. Okay, thank you for that. So sorry, I missed that. What was that last thing? Comment. The two seventy four six fifty three is is not allocated to any projects. So the three thirty two is what's in the in the reserve fund itself we've committed 58 committed 58 yeah 10 from this year and 48 from last year okay and that leaves us a, an uncommitted balance of 274. oh i got that okay okay uncommitted of it's reconciling yeah. what's in the reserve fund to yeah. what we still have uh, left to defend um, I just 
want to go back. It's, there's nobody else. I don't want to jump in here. I just want to go back uh, to page 9 of 41, um, where, where you were talking about the payables. And uh, you said that the school board payments, well, I'm looking at September 30, 2020. The school board's payments were not due on September 30th last year because they were deferred until December. So that's why that number is so fall, far, so low. They were deferred. Correct. Okay. Whereas on September the 30th this year, they were due. Correct. Oh, okay. All right. I got you. So from a cash point of view, we're at five nine uh, plus 1.1 in receivables. So from a cash point of view, that would be six. That would be almost seven, seven million. And from a payables point of view, I mean, really just 1.2 million do immediately, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Okay. Other observations, questions here with this? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, go ahead. Um, on our paving, um, Dan Street, Judy, Thomas, and Rooney. I'd like to thank the CEO and, 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 uh, and George Shaw for doing such a great job. Everything I know it's a little uneasy because the Cocoa Paving was trying to do some run around, but I see the team under budget in every one. So I think that's just great. Uh, job well done on that. Uh, that's all I have on that one. Okay, if there are no other questions, I'm about to move on here. Okay, moving on. Um, um, by the way, now just uh, so that the members are aware, I don't like to see the staff making all of these reports and making them available for our review without us acknowledging in the minutes that they were received and reviewed. So uh, to some point here, I think it's going to be at the end of 7C. I'm going to be looking for a motion to come forward uh, that uh, the, the action the information items 7A and mail that'll be named, 7B it'll be named, and 7C it'll be named, uh, that those reports were received and reviewed by the committee. So just so council is or member committee is aware of where this discussion is going. All right, so now I'm moving then to 7B, which is the third quarter budget variance report. And this is where the treasurer tells us how far we are varying from our budget plan. So through the CAO, go again, again, go ahead again. Thank you. Pass that over to the treasurer. So uh, the third quarter is as of September 30th. Um, we would expect to be uh, only having about 25% of our budget remaining if there were, you know, all things were equal. Um, the, the only thing that's varying in within our particular uh, system is that uh, insurance and things that are paid up front are already accounted for for the entire year. So that, that throws the variance off a little bit, but even our report here shows that we're at 31.8% remaining. So if we took into consideration some of the fully Expended yearly costs um, that probably would increase to probably 33 or 34 percent, which is actually really good. There's a lots of good variance um, in, in favorable variances, such as our revenues and fire department is, are quite a bit up from what we had anticipated. The building department, as we all know, is seeing a, a, a great influx in building permit activity. So I expect a surplus in that particular department at year end. We had budgeted for a deficit, so that's a really good story. Um, even public works revenues are over. That's um, specific to uh, aggregate resources. Um, probably seeing uh, that coming up higher every year um, as, as monies are uh, anticipated. We didn't anticipate that. We usually go based on you know last two or three years, but um, it's even higher than what we had anticipated. Um, the, the downfall, of course, as we all know, with the closures of our arenas, they're now open now, but we did, uh, we don't have as much of our revenue in the recreational department as we uh, had budgeted. So 
we're hoping that the costs on the on the contrary, the cost uh, of being closed for those periods will help offset that revenue, but um, it's still at this point. Um, on the ex operating expense side, uh, administration department um, has increased. We're only at a level of 13.6 percent. The bigger, biggest contributor to that is uh, is the increase in legal costs. Um, we're at, um, I think, on the on the, this quarter about 113,000, and we had only budgeted 75. So uh, we're quite a bit more than what we anticipated. Um, COVID-related costs, both wages and, uh, and and purchasing, we still have about 18 percent of that. Um, that was as of September. I think now, the last time I looked, when I looked at the, the last payroll, I think we've eaten up all the um, payroll costs associated because of now that the arenas are open, uh, we have got all the costs associated with COVID tracing and such. So we're going to have to watch, but we do have an additional amount of 58000 that will help to, uh, to help cover those costs or even some of the lost revenues. Um, winter control budget, uh, we're at 49 percent. Uh, as long as we keep that snowman out at bay, we should be we should actually see a, a little bit of a surplus in that particular budget line item. Um, and Carson Rec, as I said, consequently with the revenue low, we actually have about 37 percent left of the remaining um, budget of, of rec. So I'm hoping that the loss of revenue and the decrease in, in expenditures is going to put us in a favorable, favorable light. Uh, planning department is at 9.8. A lot of that is, um, ex, is uh, ex external part planner costs um, and, and salary benefits associated with a lot of the planning. We're seeing as well in building, we're seeing that in planning, a lot of activity in those departments. Okay, the chair is open for questions, go ahead. Councilman. Uh, yes, page 14 and 41, uh, daily chair. Uh, the last paragraph, some of the very areas to note in operating expenses are as follows. Administration department increased due to legal expenses. Costs remain above the 13%. Through the chair to the CEO and the treasurer. Um, I would like a, a breakdown on our legal expenses. In other words, where are they going? Uh, are they going for, for some of our administration problems that we had, or are they going to, uh, you know, example of uh, the ward system? I'd like to break down on that, please. So through the uh, through the chair, I, I would say it's a combination of uh, a number of uh, un unanticipated events over over this year that, that has certainly uh, um, been the cause for that uh, for that increase. If it's um, if it, if it's something that the committee wants uh, a, a more detailed breakdown, we can we, we can certainly look to provide. I would like that, uh, please. Something. Well, I think within. I think that there have been a number of uh, meetings uh, with Mr. Williams, which would account for a fair portion of the of the expenditure. Uh, yes, we have, we, we have had uh, some, uh, a few uh, human resource related uh, items that. Uh, mm -hmm. And Mr. Lee, uh, I'm sure. It's all right. You, you need negotiations. To... That's why I'd like to break down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. break down if we well, is the committee looking for a detailed breakdown here? Uh, we would have to be careful how we, how we handle that. Uh, yes, it would. Uh, it would not be. Uh, I would say it's not going to be an extremely detailed report. I don't think it could be a public report either. Um, it has to be received, in my opinion, would have to be received in an in-camera session. I'm just wondering if it's if it's uh, the public's not entitled to that. Mr. Well, the, the no. public gets gross numbers the same as as we're seeing here. Um, I don't think the detail of, well, I mean, we're, we're talking like apples and oranges here. Yeah, so I think that, um, it, it, if I may, it, it, human resources related expenses uh, with regards to legal costs, is that really what this is about? 
I would think so. I don't think we want to get into too much detail. Yeah. It's that, that's my problem right now. Yeah. And and whether or not uh, the whether or not it's uh, an exercise that it's worth having the staff do to receive in a committee meeting or in an in-camera session, that's the issue. So what's the feeling here? Does the council want to receive such a report or not? Look, the chairs look for direction. I need, I need, uh, need to find consensus here before I sign this. Yeah, I, I, I think I would, uh, I, I think for an in, an in camera for, for me um, to see where exactly and what exactly our legal uh, total is and where, where what the division of is. So I don't know. I think that we should know that. Okay, that's two. In camera. Yes. In camera. Three. I have a pretty good idea where, where the money's going if we want more detail, if we want to break break down in, in segments. I don't know that we can break down in, in individual events, but maybe towards what in camera, what human negotiations cost, what what we spend on human resources is just a bundle cost, maybe. To the CAO. This is through, uh, through, through the chair, we'll, um, we'll, we'll look to try to prepare a uh, sort of what, what, what I'll, I'll, I'll call a high level report that will at least uh, provide um, some idea of where, 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 where those uh, um, expenses have been uh, related. And I, the only thing I think that might helpful to the council and committee to know in, in camera is just how we maybe conduct business is how much an hour each one of these legal firms actually cost us uh when we're that's... talking to them that maybe we don't ask for I... when we ask for something we have a we can figure in there how much money we're actually going to expend. Uh, my, my worry there is that if you see these invoices, uh, which I do have occasion to review from time to time, uh, an invoice from a legal firm can have 14 different rates on it. Yeah, you know, it can have, you know, the rates for the this this level clerk and then a rate for this level clerk and a rate for this level clerk and a rate for the partner. It's it's very difficult to put a per hour cost. I mean, you can get the rates for all of the different uh, functionalities within that firm, but I don't know that that illustrates the, um, the problem because each individual assignment that we give to a legal firm uh, may be handled by, by different people in the office. It's not, they're not all, not all assignments are going to be handled by the same combination of functionalities within the, within the firm office. I mean, if you want, if you want the rates on a, on a by firm basis, I think we could supply that just from the invoice, just from an invoice. Uh, but is that going to be illustrative of anything? Once you incur legal costs, you incur the costs. That's... You're going to pay the invoice. It's as simple as that. So I don't know. I'm getting. I'm seeing. I think I've got three right now that are saying, "Okay, we, it's something we should assign to the staff." Um, is that? That's not quite the majority. There's seven, five. There's five of us. I don't mind seeing. That's four. Okay, so that's a real. I'm going to put more high level. High level. It will it, 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 it will be it will be a, a high level I'll try to uh, we'll, we'll try to work on it to uh, hopefully uh, um, be able to, 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 to explain that in a, in, a, in, a, in a general sense okay and any other questions with this uh, no. at, at this point in time um, I did have a question um, and that is on page 14 of 41. Uh, the public work revenue, public works revenues over budget estimate 
due to receipt of aggregate resource revenues. Is that revenues from quarries? Correct. Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. So, Councillor Hunter. Uh, well, I know where it came from. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pecuniary interest, by the way. <laughs> Didn't come to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I have one question, and it's it's not on these these reports, but um, uh, moving forward, when we come to our next budget discussion, um, one thing that will affect them will be a reduction in OMPF. Is it what I think it is for next year? Is it like almost 100000 less for next year? No, I have some good news. We actually had an increase in our OMPF funding. Wow. Nice. Good. Yeah. So do we know what that is going to be? Yes. We want, we, we want, want to keep that a keep secret that to to for budget it. meeting number one. Well, if it was, it was on a chart, you could look it up. Yes, yeah. I'm looking, I'm looking yeah. at the 2021 one, but I, I don't have the 2022 one. I don't know. Yeah, they're yeah, saying if you want us to budget, we're figuring we're losing money and we're going to surprise <laughs> you. You did not have your big tax increase. Not, not, no, not, no, 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 no. Does it get it back? To, does it get us back to 2020? No. Not quite. But not a, not a, not the only negative in the it's, it's good. Okay. okay. Uh, so, any other questions with the budget variance report? Hearing none. I'm moving on then. And the third item, seven C, is the third uh, quarter council remuneration report, which is um, a function of uh, legislation. That this report be prepared, and uh, council has requested that it be prepared on a quarterly basis, if I recall correctly, and that's why we're getting it uh, each quarter. So the report is in front of you on page twenty-one of forty-one. Are there any errors or omissions? Any discussion of anything? Hearing none, I'm about to move on unless somebody jumps in here. Okay, so it's at this point that I'm going to ask for a motion that would recognize the fact that uh, report 7A, and again, I'll ask the clerk to list the name of the report in the motion, 7B and 7C be, uh, were, were, in fact, received and reviewed by the committee. Councillor Hunter moving. Does yes. he have a second? Yes. Councillor Dillabaugh seconded. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. And I'd like to thank the staff for the work they did in preparing those reports. All right, so now we're at 7D, which is the proposal for a letter folding machine. And as you can see from the briefing note, uh, there is a great deal of time uh, savings involved in this purchase. And uh, we do have a recommendation here on page 23 of 41 resulting from the briefing note. So, the chair is open for discussion here. I'll move the recommendation as, as it's written. Deputy Mayor Deschamps moving. Does he have a second? He does. He has a second here, Councillor Cameron. Now, discussion on the motion then. Discussion on the motion, which is to approve the recommendation. Councillor Hunter. Uh, I don't have any problem with the motion. Uh, uh, the CEO this morning when I get in here and I'm looking at our stamp machine. Uh, uh, I wonder uh, when we're talking to these, uh, I know this is the recommendation for this machine, but uh, is it the way that these machines tie together that they can fold it in any envelope and stamp, but it's not through the, CA, through the chair of the CAO beyond my pay grade. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I, I will. I, I will ask the treasurer if she is aware of. Uh, she may be able to answer that. Certainly, through the chair. Um, no, there isn't at this point. There's no device to stop that. Um, the two devices are going to have to be separate. Um, but the efficiency with the new postage machine, it it has a stack like you can stack up to five yeah. letters in this postage machine, and it auto feeds. So as somebody's pulling stuff off the letter folder machine, another person will be stacking the letter postage machine and, and it, it'll be a very smooth and, and quick um, process for sure. So. I may ask, what, what is the ROI on this? The, the, sorry, the ROI, um, the return on investment mm -hmm. for the 
you're spending ten thousand dollars what how long is it going to take to replace that in terms of the labor that would have been consumed it's interesting that you answer that ask that question um through the chair uh the cao and i had that same conversation it's a really hard uh intangible when we're talking um staffing time and stuff um i could certainly have done that um it, it's it's one of those things that if, if I pick just those two points in time when I'm talking about doing um, the main tax billing, uh, it would take us a long time to do that. But I know uh, for a fact there are several other instances throughout the year. We do water billing monthly, we do sewer billing quarterly. Um, I would have had to have gone into great depth to try to calculate all the hours associated. Um, I, I still think with the, the use of uh, the capacity that we have in the uh, township office here with limited resources, uh, if when we get doing tax bills and there's eight of us and we're talking and the CAO, the building chief building official, the fire chief, you know, we're talking to senior managers that are sitting folding for, for half a day, it, it adds up quick. Mm -hmm. The ROA. If we were looking at it just for those two, it would probably take more than 10 years, but I know that there's other aspects to the, to the business that we could probably get that down to within uh, you know, five, five year return on investment. So with a full, full it just folds and you still have the stuff to anyway, right? It folds and inserts. It does insert. It folds and inserts, yeah, it's a folder inserter into the envelopes and then the envelopes just have to go into the uh, postage machine on it. It seals the envelope. Yes, the postage machine seals the envelope. Thanks, Bernard. Cameron. Yes, uh, um, I, I, I was, I was able to witness a, a session going on uh, uh, here, and and, and uh, Madam Treasurer is absolutely correct. There was there was senior management sitting around these tables and. And uh, uh, folding and doing whatever they had to be doing at that particular time, and some of the other work that could have been done in, in the meantime, you have to take that into consideration as well. And I think, to be quite truthful, long time coming. Good, good investment, I think. Okay. Further discussion, if any. No further discussion. I'm about to call a question before the chair, which has been duly moved and seconded. Those in favor? Aye. The motion is carried. Now I'm moving to item number 7E, which is the 2022 Municipal Insurance Program. And again, there is a briefing note on that starts on page 29. Of 41, I think 29 and 30 at the 41, and a recommendation with the briefing note. Chair is looking for a discussion. There is a recommendation with the briefing note. I'll move that recommendation, Mr. Mayor. Does Councillor Dillabaugh have a second? A second. Councillor Hodger seconds. Discussion of any? No discussion on this? Big well, money. I think, I think we've been down that path, okay. Mr. Mayor, last year. And your implication is? Well, my, it still hasn't changed from last year to this year. The market's tight. Big pardon? It hasn't changed from what I felt last year to this year. The you know market, that for a fact now? The market. That it hasn't changed. Yeah. My opinion, yes. Your opinion, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. My opinion. Yeah. From okay. last year to this year. Fair enough. It hasn't changed. And that's why I made the recommendation to carry on. Okay, about to call the question on the motion. Those in favor? Aye. The motion is carried. And I'm moving then into item number seven F. Uh, now, this is a report that's coming forward um, as required by uh, law. And I think that the only thing that's up for discussion here is a motion to receive this report. And the chair is looking for a motion to receive this report. I think there's a recommendation on page 31 of 41. So, 
Uh, Councillor Hunter moving. Yes. And Councillor Cameron seconding. Question before you call the question. Go ahead. Um, we can read through um, 2015-33, which is the bylaw that relates back to to the investigations under complaints and, and appointing the integrity commissioner. Page um, reference? Uh, well, it's, it's no, it's not in your package. It's, it's completely separate from it, but it's, it's uh, page 39 in the bylaw. Um, nowhere in there does it require that, it requires that we receive these reports. Um, um, it, it recognizes the need for openness, transparency, and how it is in the municipality and the residents of the municipality's best interests um, to, to do these um, investigations. Uh, but nowhere on our website does it share the reports, um, whether they've been dismissed or whether there have been um, justifications to the complaints. Um, looking at other township websites, there's often on those websites a link so that we can view integrity commissioner reports on, on their uh, website. So um, not at this meeting, but I, at a further meeting, I will be uh, bringing forward, I guess I should do that under notices of motion, but I will be bringing a notice of motion to amend uh, 2015-33 to, to include that it gets these reports are posted on, on our township website. Well, the complaint protocols are attached as Schedule A, which appear on page 40 of 41. Is yeah, it, maybe, that's where I, maybe that's where I'm going through. It could be. You may be right. I printed a bunch of stuff off from, from ours, so it could be. So through the CAO, I mean, I, I didn't review this uh, Schedule A in detail. Um, do, do we not publish these reports? I mean, the Integrity Commissioner is bound to report to Council, which is what's happening here is reporting to council through this committee. Uh, once council receives this report, which is the motion that's on the floor, I believe, uh, are, the, are the reports themselves not made public as the deputy mayor is indicating? Um, through, the, uh, uh, through, the, through, the, through the chair, um, I am just, uh, Part, like part, part of the reason why we, 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 we placed this in the public packets to, to, was to make sure that it was out in the, out in the public. Um, but with, re, with respect to, to posting uh, that on, on, on the website, uh, that, has not been a, that has not been a uh, past practice. In the bylaws, if I made through the, through the mayor. Um, the, the bylaw is 2015 and certainly uh, things have, you know, have changed a lot um, with, with the website and making, uh, you know, our website compliant for all different reasons. I, I think, you know, one of the, the very beginning things in the, uh, the actual bylaw itself is that, that it's, you know, in the public interest and, and very desirable. Uh, are words that are that are used there, but nowhere in the twelve points does it recommend that it that it should be uh, on uh, or available for easy public access. So, well, if I can just jump in here, um, if and I'm I'm just I'm trying to read between the lines of what I'm hearing now. Uh, if there was a desire um, to have this report published on the township website, uh, the recommendation that's in front of the committee uh, now could be amended uh, by adding uh, that council receives the attached report from the integrity commissioner and the amendment would be and instructs that the report 
be published on the website and made public. So that might address the concern that I'm hearing, but I don't want to read well, something into this. That would address it. Uh, okay, do you want to jump in here? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to point out that any member of the public of our, ta of our taxpayers can come into this office and if it's a public document, can ask to see it. I really don't, I really do think I have a bit of a problem with putting everything on, on, the, on the website. Um, that, that option is available to anyone. Um, and, I, and I know, I know what you're getting at here and, and, and I probably would be requesting the same thing if, if it was on the other, on the other foot, but I just, I would just like to point out that everybody can come in and get a copy of this or look at it and be satisfied with it. As, as they can virtually do if they go to the website, I, I, I do agree, but I, I'm just sure, I'm, I'm just not sure that we want to put everything on, on the website and I'll leave it at that. Go ahead, Back certainly as, as someone who campaigned on uh, on openness and transparency and made it part of my mandate, I have absolutely, uh, if I was guilty in this, I would be making the, the same argument and have made it uh, before. But uh, I think anytime your integrity gets questioned and, and I'm quite happy to, um, you know, if that happens to me, um, stand behind having the results of that for or against published for easy access for taxpayers um, for all all matters are transparent so um, absolutely nothing to hide good or bad uh, I'd rather have it there I, I have another question regarding the uh, regarding the uh, the outcome um, if, if I may now and my question is to staff through uh, through the chair to either the CEO or the treasurer. Um, this, th this has cost a fair amount of money. We don't know what that amount is, but we will know in somewhere down the line. Is, uh, is that money recoverable? To the chair, no, it is a public function. Thank you. Okay, any other discussion before I call the question here? Mm -hmm. Councillor Hunter. I don't have a question, but uh, but yeah. you want to have the motion amend it there, there I'm in favor of amending that and I mean, if not, if you see do it the other way, that way uh, and the uh, deputy mayor didn't want to bring this forward to say notice the motion to amend the bylaw, I'd be pleased to second it and agree with the motion. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll second the motion to amend the this so that regardless of what the outcome of that is that this gets on the website now i'm i'm fine with that and, and then i'll still move the motion forward at, okay, no. at an appropriate time okay so just hang on a second because i have to catch up with myself but before i do count the cao want it in here well, thank, thank you mr chair i i just think that it uh, due to the age of the current bylaw being 2015 it probably would be worthwhile to uh, update the, uh, the schedule um, and, uh, and and have that fine tuned. Uh, my 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 preference would be to update that that schedule to uh, reflect those items and then post this report. Okay, so that is kind of uh, I haven't recognized yet the mover of a, of an amendment. Uh, uh, so I'll say to the table, not speaking to any individual, I'll say to the table, having heard the, the CAOs and others, uh, is there still a, um, an appetite for an amendment to the, to, the, to the recommendation in front of the table? I would like to see the bylaw amended. Well, I, think I can go along long. I think uh, that bylaw needs need update in probably more than one place, but so I'm pleased to recommend an amendment to this motion right now where I deal with the bylaw later. All right, so I have an amendment proposed by Councillor Hunter. I will remove my second from that. 
Okay, so just give me one second. I've got to get the wording of an amendment and it would be the following and that the report be made public and posted on the township website. Is that the intent of the motion? Does Councillor Hunter have a seconder? No second. I have Councillor Dillabaugh second. All right. So now we're talking only about the amendment. And it's only for this. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So if the amendment passes, the motion will then read. That committee recommends that council receives the attached report from the integrity commissioner and that the report be made public and posted on the township website. That would be the full motion in front of us. So we're dealing only at this point with the amendment, which is to add that last clause. All right, discussion on the amendment only. Do we add the clause or don't we? Yes or no? Yes. No. Okay, so I'm going to call the question on the amendment. Those in favor of the amendment? Aye. One, two, three. Okay, so the amendment is carried. All right, now the amendment is carried. And now I'll turn to the call the question on the amended motion. And the amended motion is that committee recommends that council receives the attached report from the integrity commissioner and that the report be made public and posted on the township website. Those yep. in favor of the amend okay, amended move, motion. I'm going to move you up a little bit. I'm going to ask for a recorded vote, please. Isn't that the same motion we just voted on? What's the difference? No, we voted on the amendment. I'm voting on adding and adding. Okay. Adding okay. Adding okay. Adding okay. I got All right. You. Now, just give me one second here. Because uh, I don't have a chart in front of me, I have to create one. Okay, Councillor Dillabaugh, how do you vote? Yay. Councillor Cameron, how do you vote? It'll be yay. Sale votes yay. Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Deschamps, how do you vote? Yay. Councillor Hunter, how do you vote? Yay. And Mr. Rainville, how do you vote? Yay. Motion carries unanimously. Chair Marks, it is carried. Okay, so moving on. I'm now at number eight on the agenda which is council inquiries or notices of motion. So I think Deputy Mayor wants it here again. Yep. I have two notices of motion. So one will be, I will bring a motion forward to amend bylaw 2015-33, which is amend bylaw, what was it? 2015-33, uh, which is a bylaw to appoint an integrity commissioner pursuant to this act. Good. And second one would be another motion to amend um, uh, bylaw 2019-77, which is council code of conduct. Uh, so that it is not just council, that it includes uh, committee. Okay, two notices of motion. And when do you intend to bring those notices motion for before the next council meeting? There will be a council meeting at the end of November. Oh, Mr. Mayor. Okay, now hang on. I'm CAO first and then the, and then okay. the councillor. Uh, so, so, Mr. Chair, just want to confirm that we're looking to amend uh, 
2015 33. Uh, are we looking to amend Schedule A of 2013? Okay, so, uh, so through the chair to Deputy Mayor, is it the bylaw you want amended or the schedule to the bylaw? Well, the, the CAO recommended uh, in the discussion, mine was to add a number 13, is what is what my notice uh, is for, but the CAO has recommended that we uh, probably review the entire document, correct? Yes, my, 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 uh, yes, my recommendation would be the uh, complaint protocols of Schedule A be, be, be reviewed and updated. Which is what mine is. It's, it's no, I would, I would wanted to add something to Schedule A. So I think the rest of it, in my opinion, is, is perfectly fine. Okay, so the meet will come when we see the motion. Councillor? No, I just want you to I make you aware that the oh. CAO won. Sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, are there any other notices, motion, or council inquiries before the chair? I, I have one, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a short one. On Friday, uh, myself and, and Councillor Shanker from uh, Prescott uh, took the uh, river bus uh, from, I took it from Johnstown to Brocko. He did from Prescott to Brocko. We had approximately 15 people that we were on the bus with us. I thought it was very organized. I think it needs to be tweaked. Uh, I'm going to, for what it's worth, uh, do uh, put together uh, some notes and give it to our economic development officer to take it up and see if we can't tweak it and help get the word out. I think the biggest thing is getting the word out. I don't know how. We're going to do it, but uh, I think we're getting the word out. I think it will be successful. So, it well, does need to be tweaked, though. Well, again, uh, now, Mr. Grant, help me out here. Were you not a member of this of the planning committee here? I, 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 I am on the I am on the committee. Right, that's what I thought. And so, you're the direct link at that at that organizational structure so uh through the chair the community development coordinator is is, is also on uh, on the marketing subcommittee marketing subcommittee correct all right correct so i, I so if councillor dillabaugh gets it to to the community development coordinator does it go to you as well it would it, it, it would end, it, it would end up going to me okay and does your committee meet regularly uh, the, the the operations uh, and and marketing subcommittee uh, meet on a on, on a reasonable basis. The, the reason that I'm asking that question is because at this point I haven't seen a great deal of marketing material, which I think is the point that the councillor is trying to raise. Not trying to put words in his mouth, but uh, is there going to be a, a a marketing effort? I mean, we're almost three months into this thing, and it's only a six month project. So uh, through, through through the chair, uh, there certainly uh, is uh, some some marketing being being complete, uh, but uh, I, I have not received the uh, the latest update from the marketing uh, committee meeting. Okay, so Councillor Dillaball will hand his report to either you or to the community development coordinator. That's the yeah, thing on the mechanism. Okay, are there any other council inquiries or notices of motion to bring forward tonight? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to proceed to the mayor's report. Uh, and I'm just going to put three things up. Uh, the first is that uh, you may or may not be aware that the um, date was that November the 5th, which I think was Friday, the, prov the province re released their uh, Ontario Economic Outlet Outlook and Fiscal Review. And as a part of that announcement, the government announced that the continued postponement of the province-wide assessment uh, would continue. This means that property taxes for the 2022 and 2023 taxation years will, be, will continue to be based on the January 1st, 2016 valuation date. Property assessments will remain the same as they were for the 2021 tax year, unless there have been changes to the property 
and of course that those changes have been caught by MPAC and the assessment adjusted. This announcement and MPAC reports, this announcement does not change the work that MPAC does to maintain the assessment role, including the addition of new assessment. And we understand that as each of our building permits are uh, action, uh, MPAC is very proactive in trying to incorporate those new um, constructions into our assessment roles. Uh, they say that they understand the importance of revenue generated from ongoing construction and renovation projects, and we will continue to capture the value of these changes throughout the year. Now, of course, what this is going to do, and I don't need, think I need to, to underscore too much here, but remember that as of this date, the entire province is on the January 1, 2016 valuation date, and all and that valuation has been fully incorporated into all properties uh, with the 2020 taxation year, right? And so now the 21 taxation year was uh, based on January 1, 2016. 22 will be based on January 1, 2016, as will 23. And I don't have to tell you that there's a huge uh, problem uh, developing here, but I'm just pointing that out. No discussion, just pointing it out. All right, the next thing, again, uh, I'm mentioning it because this is a public meeting, uh, that the United Counties of Leeds and Grenville Economic Development Summit will take place on Friday, November the 19th. It will be a virtual economic development summit. Uh, the agenda has been released. Uh, registrations are being received. And I was told today that uh, Brendan Bland from Greenfield Global will be participating, as will uh, Carrie Manchuk, who is the manager of the Job Site Challenge Program at the Ministry of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. So some things to be learned uh, from listening to those two speakers at the Economic Development Summit. I would urge uh, Mr. Rainville and Mr. Robertson, if they're not already registered, uh, to get themselves registered. And I think they would do that through the clerk. Um, and then last thing to report is that the St. Lawrence Corridor well, the second last thing to report, the St. Lawrence Corridor Economic Development Committee will meet on Wednesday, November the 10th at one o'clock. And this is the first meeting in quite some period of time. And uh, I'm really hopeful uh, that we will hear a major announcement that has kind of been in the background for about the past three months. Whether it will materialize or not, I don't know. And then last thing, and I will be reporting on this in the, um, in the in-camera session, which follows, is that we are continuing our discussions with Infrastructure Ontario through the good offices of the Provincial Land and Development uh, Facilitator. And uh, so that's for the public record. And then the detail of those uh, negotiations will come in the in-camera session. So that's the Mayor's report. I'm moving to item number 10 on the agenda, which is the question Question period. Question no. Before you go, question period. Uh, when's the November 10th St. Lawrence meeting? Where's it being held? Is it virtual? Uh, well, it's or, it's the first meeting that we've held in over a year, which is going to be in person attendance at the Aquatarium in Brockville with no facility for virtual attendance. And so the commitment from the secretary is that the uh, Minutes of that meeting will be available as soon as possible after the meeting is over, but there's a, an apology all the way around is that the meeting can't, and I don't understand the technical reasons, but the meeting can't uh, accommodate virtual attendees. So the members of the um, Economic Development Commission, there are 14 of us, are either present or we're not there. We can't even attend virtually. So either we attend in person and show that we're double vaxxed or we don't attend. And then of course, there are always a number of other folks that attend. Um, generally, 
in a, um, in a, I'm not going to say an advisory role, but they attend as sort of background information and they're not going to be able to attend either. So I'm just reporting that so that there's no hidden agenda here. I don't know what the technical reasons are. All right, uh, so now uh, to the clerk, I don't think there's anybody on Zoom to ask questions. There's nobody in the audience, so there's no question period. We have no close, oh yes, we do have a closed session tonight. And so the chair is looking for the motion to go into the closed session. Personal matter to better identify the individual, including municipal or local board employees, specifically citizen of the year, public works, and minutes of closed session date October 12, 2021, to section 239 2C, proposed pending acquisition or disposal of land by the municipality or local board, specifically Edgesburg Land Bank, the outside challenge, and minutes of closed session date September 13, 2021. Okay, and the motion is on the floor. Those in favor? Motion is carried without well, just a five minute break. Get into the closed session. Thirty thirty one minutes will get you to my predicted time. So <laughs> you've got time to play with here. So. <laughs> You're ridiculous. <laughs> Um, Steve, oh, what are you requesting to, uh, to to attend? I'm sorry, uh, Dave. I didn't know you. I've been dealing with questions. You can't say for this one. You're allowed to stay for the closed session. Oh, this one. I wonder if in personal matters. Oh, personal matters. Right. Sorry. That's right. I, I think your voice in the drop site challenge one would, yeah. be, would be would be good. Is it happening in second? Yeah, no, I guess first, but I don't know. I've got my answer. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't know you were on the committee. I knew I knew I mean uh, Wendy was. I, I don't make those decisions, but but I see no reason why you can't be here for I don't I mean he swore the same, he swore the oath, did you not? He swore the same oath. I mean he's a committee member. Can you be here for yeah, I know they are. I get the personnel matter stuff, but it's first. It's the first oh. item. I think that's why they made Find out who paid them. I want to marry you. Okay. 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 Oh, <laughs> you're in trouble. <laughs> That'll <laughs> teach you. <laughs> Cancel that. <one. laughs> That'll teach you. <laughs> Thank you for the reply. Oh, well, that's the only thing I can remember a long time ago, thinking about 65 years ago. But I think there used to be a box stove in there someplace that was very busy. Mm -hmm. it. It's a, mm -hmm. was in there. There's, there's three chimneys. One was for so, coal so fired oil. Yeah. Yeah. One was uh, for a uh, <laughs> two fire yeah. process. All right. Yeah, the other one um, thinks that he was straight down to the kitchen where the current stove is. So I assume that it might have been a little worse. Yeah. Yeah, not this one. Not this one. Okay. You're going to be there once you get the mark? Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Can, he, can he ask the commission to attend? Can he ask? I didn't want to. Attend. I just wanted to do the character. I was going to oh, you'd see it if it was virtual. Yeah. Yeah. If he did. You want me to read it again? Yeah. Hold mm -hmm. on, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to have Council Hunter read that again. Sorry. Move myself, second the Deputy Mayor Dishout, the closed meeting of the committee does now adjourn. The open meeting does now resume at 9.33 p.m. Okay, those in favor? All right. All right, so we're back in an open session and I'm going to report out from the closed session, from the in-camera session. So the first item dealt with in the closed session was the selection of the citizen of the year. 
and uh, council made a decision on the citizen of the year for 2021. And that name will be announced at the council meeting at the end of the month when the citizen of the year will be identified and presented with a, um, an acknowledgement. And then the next thing that the council dealt with in closed session was the approval of closed minutes from the meetings of September the 13th and October the 12th. And Councillor Dillabaugh will bring forward a resolution. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and second by Council Cameron that the committee receives and approves the closed session minutes dated September 13th, 2021 and October 12th, 2021. The motion is on the table. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. And then the last thing that the council dealt with, uh, the committee dealt with, was discussion concerning the Edwardsburg Land Bank and the job site challenge lands. And uh, after lengthy discussion, provided the mayor with instructions to take to the uh, facilitator. And now the chair is looking for the motion to adjourn. I have that one. Moved by myself, seconded by Council John Hunter, that the committee does now adjourn at 9.36 p.m. Motion's on the table. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is carried. We're adjourned.